Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from the O-Ray team with an overview of the UHD FO40 Fiber Optic Long Distance HDMI Extender Kit. This product allows you to share any HDMI media content with a second location up to 300 meters away over a standard fiber optic duplex connection. You can even extend the distance between the transmitter and receiver unit by using a simplex connection. The product fully supports 4K ultra high definition uncompressed media and features audio extraction capabilities that will strip the audio from the media stream you're transmitting and allow you to pass that along to a soundbar through the SP diff connection for the best possible audio quality. The transmitter features local loopback functionality, which allows you to enjoy the content here while you're simultaneously broadcasting it to the remote location. And finally, this can be set up as a one-to-one -one relationship or a one-to-many relationship simply using a 10 gig switch. Now, as part of this overview, I'd like to do a quick unboxing just to show you everything that's included with the kit, and then I'll take a closer look at the components and explain exactly how they work. I'll list the features and functions the product provides, and then finally, I'll come back and actually do a demonstration here to show you just how simple this product is to use. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you first open up the box, you'll find a transmitter module and a receiver module. Both of these come with DC power supplies. These are 5 volt 2 amp supplies. You'll plug this into any standard wall outlet. The other end has a barrel connection on it, which plugs into the back of the unit, and that's all the power you'll need for the transmitter and receiver. You'll also find infrared blaster kits that are responsible for collecting the infrared remote control signals from that location and sending them back over that fabric connection to the primary location where they're being rebroadcast. Also included are mounting brackets you can use to mount these up off the ground and out of the way. And finally, two fiber optic modules, a simplex and a duplex. Depending on which cable system you're using, you can simply slide that into the receiver, slide the same one into the transmitter, and connect up your cable between them. Also included is a full instruction manual that explains exactly how to connect this. All kinds of specifications and connection diagrams are in that manual as well. Now, if you stay tuned next, I'll actually take a closer look at both modules and explain the connections you'll need to make to use it with your own equipment. Inside the kit, you'll find the transmitter and the receiver. Both of these feature full metal enclosures, which make them incredibly durable and help to minimize outside interference from causing any issues internally. Included with the kit as well are two fiber optic modules, and these are a little bit different depending on which cable you're gonna use. This is a simplex module, and you'll know that's the case because it's got a single connection. The duplex module has two connections on it there, and you can change these out on the actual transmitter and receiver right here in this particular port. That's where the SFP goes. And depending on the cable you're using, you have to select the correct module. Now I'm using a simplex cable here, so I go with the simplex connection there. Simply plug that in between the two modules and that's the connection you'll need to transmit your audio and your video. Now we'll take a closer look at the two modules. And I'll start with the transmitter module. Again, full metal enclosure. There are fins on the top that dissipate the heat internally when the unit's running. On either side, there are more heat sink fins there. You'll also notice mounting holes right there that you can use with the included bracketing kit to mount this up off the ground and out of the way. On the front of the module are three indicator lights on the left, power, status, and ARC. When you first add power to the unit, it starts an internal power on self-test. When it finishes that, it'll light that LED, letting you know the module's ready to use. The status light shows the connection between the transmitter and receiver. When that fiber optic connection is made, that'll light up, letting you know you have a good connection between the two modules. The ARC is indicating whether you're using SPDIF or ARC out, and you'll actually use an SPDIF cable here if you want to use that. And you can turn that on, I'll show you that in a second. Next to that are two infrared blaster ports. This unit can transmit remote control signals from the second location back to the primary. You'll plug the module for this transmitter unit into the IR out right there, and it's clearly labeled on the unit. To the right of that is for your ARC output if you want to use an SPDIF connection. To the right of that is an RS-232 connection port. This unit can also transfer RS-232 connections between the sender and receiver. If you decide to use that, there's a connection block in the kit, you can plug it in there. On the right of that is a small micro USB connection, and that's for upgrading the module later on if new features are introduced. To do that, you'll connect it up with a short cable from here to your computer, push the firmware file to here to complete that upgrade. On the rear units where you'll make all your connections, starting on the left is the DC power port. You'll use the included power supply, plug it into the wall, plug the barrel connection in here, and that's all the power you'll need to operate the unit. The transmitter has a loop out function here, so you can actually watch the content at the primary location while you're transmitting it to the secondary location. And the first connection here, the HDMI input, connects up to your media player that you'd like to share the content from with the secondary location. If you decide to use the loop out function, you'll connect another HDMI cable from here to a local monitor to watch that content. 
Here's where the SFP plugs in. And again, I'm using a simplex connection on this one. And then finally, a reset button on the right. If you need to reset the module, hold that in for a few seconds and it'll reset the module for you. Now we'll take a look at the receiver. It's very similar. Metal enclosure, again, heat fins on the top, heat fins on the side, as well as connection. Points right here for the brackets. On the front of the unit, same status indicator lights on the left, power, status, and ARC. Infrared blasters in and out. In this case, at the receiver end, you use the infrared in right here, and you'll plug that into the correct module. Here's the SP diff out. You can connect this up to a sound bar at that remote location to actually enjoy that content. And here's where you switch to ARC if you decide to use that. You can tap that. The ARC light will come on. You know you're using ARC. Again, RS-232 connection block here. And then finally, the micro USB connection for upgrading the receiver. On the other end are your connections. DC power port. Use the second power supply, plug it into the wall, the barrel connector gets plugged in there. The HDMI output port connects up to your local monitor. Standard HDMI connection from here to the monitor. There's where the second SFP goes in. Again, you've got to match that with the simplex or duplex you're using in the transmitter. And then finally, there's a reset button right there to reset the module. And that's pretty much it for the transmitter and receiver modules. The O-Ray UHD FO40 is compatible with all modern media devices with an HDMI output, including security cameras, media players, digital video recorders, streaming devices, and computer systems. The product's features include full support for ultra-high definition 4K media content. It provides zero latency, uncompressed transmission of that signal. It is both HDMI ARC and CEC compliant. Audio extraction is available at the receiver through an SP diff connection and the transmitter provides local loopback as well as IR pass-through for the entire system. Now I'll show you the connections you'll need to make to use this product with your own equipment. And for this demonstration, over here I've set up a small media player that's currently looping a video on this monitor, and that's the content I'd like to share with my remote location. This represents the primary location where you're currently enjoying the content. Over here, I've set up a second monitor that represents my remote location. It's wherever you'd like to enjoy that content from the primary location. I have the transmitter module here and the receiver module here. Now, the first set of connections I'll make are to the transmitter module, and I'll start by disconnecting the media player from the monitor. It's an HDMI connection, and I'll plug that into the HDMI input port in the back of the transmitter. Now, this unit also provides local loopback functionality, which is really nice because it allows you to enjoy the content here at the primary location while you're broadcasting it to the remote location. And to do that, you'll need a second HDMI cable, and you'll plug one end of that cable into the loop out port in the back, and then the other end of it into your monitor. And now I'm ready to add power. I've already plugged the power supply in. There's a single barrel connection which plugs into the DC port in the back of the transmitter. Now the minute I add power to this module, it starts an internal power on self-test where it's checking all the electronics to make sure everything's working fine. It's also checking the resolution of the media content coming in. And if you're using the loop out, the resolution of the monitor, it's gonna make whatever adjustments are needed to give you the best possible picture here locally. Once it finishes that test, it'll bring up the image on the screen. And that's a good test to do before you extend it to the remote location, because that tells you everything in the transmitter side is working just fine. Now we're ready to connect up the remote module. I'll connect up an HDMI cable from the monitor to the HDMI output port on the receiver. And then the power supply is already plugged in, barrel connection again, and that plugs into the DC port in the back. Now again, once I add power here, this starts an internal power on self-test. It's checking the electronics. It's also checking the resolution of the monitor to make what adjustments are needed to give you the best possible picture here. It also needs to know what that resolution is so it can tell the transmitter what best format to send across for that secondary monitor. Now the only connection I'm missing between these two is that fiber optic cable. And again, up to 300 meters on a duplex connection and up to 40 kilometers on a simplex connection. A couple things to keep in mind. Unlike LAN connections between a transmitter and a receiver, you're dealing with light here. So it's really important that you keep the cable protected and clean and keep the ports protected and clean. And this unit comes with two different I.O. modules. You have one for simplex and one for duplex. It's really easy to tell them apart because the simplex has one connection, the duplex has two connections, but depending on the cable you're running, you've got to put the appropriate module in the back. And I'd recommend you keep the dust cover on the module and the dust cover on the cable until you actually plug them into the unit because if dust gets inside that module, it can cause issues with the transmission. All right, so enough about that. Let me disconnect the module over here and I'll take the dust cover off that and I'll plug that into the transmitter and then I'll get ready to plug it into the receiver as well. You gotta be very careful when you plug these in. All right, here's the dust cover on the second one. I'll pull the dust cover off the module and connect that one up. 
Now, the minute I make this connection, a few things are happening. The transmitter now knows the receiver's out there. It's doing a handshake to sort of align itself with the receiver. It's figuring out what resolution to send to the receiver so that it can give you the best possible picture. And there you go, there's the secondary monitor lit up. I hope you found this overview of the UHD FO40 fiber optic long distance HDMI extender kit helpful. It really does provide an incredibly easy way of sharing any of your HDMI media content with a second location up to 300 meters away over a duplex connection and up to 40 kilometers away over a simplex connection. And the fact that it fully supports ultra high definition 4K media in uncompressed format means you're gonna get the best possible picture quality at that secondary location. The inclusion of the infrared blasters means that your remote control signals from that secondary location will be passed back to the primary location so you can control the content you're watching. The audio extraction capabilities are handy because they allow you to pass that audio from the media stream that's being sent along to a sound bar for better quality audio. And finally, the fact that this can be a one-to-one -one or one-to-many means you can expand this as needed with a 10 gig switch. Everything needed to get started is included with the kit, and with a few simple connections, you can be up and running in no time. So until next time, thanks again for watching.